When I listen to my colleagues in the industry, uh, we have a challenge today because we're not very good at adopting technology and supporting to that technology. We'll be talking more about digital health. Uh, we'll be talking about risk assessment and how we make that transparent in the way that we do clinical development. Um, I have to say I'm looking with great excitement at the recent Quintiles IMS merger. What kind of services they really truly in the end deliver because I think of course the intention is to create a new service category combining healthcare data more thoroughly with service industry in the, in the clinical research execution space and how that is going to look like to me is, is and what does it mean for the, for the CRO sector in general as an influence, um, to me is, is probably I'm most excited about for the next few years. I think other changes are going to come with the way that we review uh, medicine. So um, the re disease I represent is a rare disease um, called Captinuria. And um, one of the big problems that rare diseases face is that a lot of the medications patients take are off-label. Um, so that means a drug that's been licensed for another disease and being used um, for a secondary disease that it's not licensed in. Um, and one of the big problems with rare diseases is that off-label medication is obviously great for patients to access a drug that they couldn't otherwise access. But the problem is that that access isn't reliable. So what that means is that there's a big um, disparity of access. So some patients get it very easily, other patients can't. So I think one of the big changes we're going to see in clinical trials is a much bigger reliance on real-world data. Um, so that's instead of doing a, a phase three or a phase four, that's really using the real-world data of patients using off-label medications, particularly in the rare diseases where there may only be you know, tens or hundreds of patients um, in the world. It's not really practical to do a full phase three study in those patients. So I think there's going to be much greater reliance on real-world data and things like off-label use. One of the big problems that we faced was the fact that we recruited patients across the whole of Europe. And so that meant that there was a variety of different languages. And I think definitely that's somewhere where technology is going to play a much bigger role in the future of clinical trials. I think that there's going to be better ways to actually handle that language barrier. Um, so for instance, in our studies, um, we had some very simple solutions. Um, we used um, a platform called Rare Connect. It's actually an initiative of um, Eurodis, which is a rare diseases Europe. And they have a platform called Rare Connect, and that allows human translations um, for many um, European languages. So it meant that we could talk to patients speaking French, German, Italian, whatever. And it meant that we could actually have a, a very good conversation with them in their native language that they could follow um, completely. Um, but I think that's a great first step. But I think that's definitely going to be a very key area in the future. Um, to help just improve recruitment and, and retention, really, in clinical trials. And my personal hope is that we'll be talking more about uh, the human-to-human -human relationship because we can have all of the regulatory requirements, we can have all of the endpoints that we need in clinical trials, we can have all of the technology, but let's not forget who we are. Yeah. We're pharma companies and CROs and other providers with people who are working together for the best outcomes for certain patients in certain disease areas. So I hope that all the things that we're putting in place will support the relationship in any type of project or initiative to really make our lives better, both in a professional world as well as, you know, in a personal world. Mm -hmm.